peace, peace. Now is the vibe, Y'all know what it is. Not too far in the future, not too far in the past. Right now, I'm going to do a little build on the deity Indra uh, and the Jaster, uh, the Jaster Nakshatra. And it's going to eventually connect to, you know, fairies. And of course, with all of it being, you know, a display of how mythology in a mythology is anatomy by law and anatomy is mythology by law, you know, and also showing the connection of eyes and vaginas and how they're interchangeable as symbols when you're talking about, you know, mythology and, you know, uh, also connecting with the body as well. So the Jaster Nakshatra, Jaster Nakshatra, as you see right here, Jaster is connected to the Scorpio constellation. And right here on these notes, all the different Nakshatras, Jaster is connected to Antares. Now Antares is known as the heart of Scorpio and it's an energy that is somewhat like of a, you know, a battle conflicting type of energy, you know, uh, is also, again, is dealing with the energy of Scorpio. And we're just going to go, go down the line and showing how, again, this connects with Indra and how this eventually connects to fairies, you know what I'm saying? And it just goes down the line and a list of things. Now, again, a nakshatra is basically a star or heavenly body it's in basically in vedic astrology you know the nakshatras is 27 basically 27 nakshatras and they represent the 27 daughters of daksha prajapati and basically the wives of chandra the moon and basically again it takes 27 to 28 days for the to moon for the moon to go through its full moon from its new moon full moon cycle and back to a new moon you know and uh this is also connected as above so below so mythology is anatomy by law this is the anatomy of the menstrual cycle of a woman just starting from there you know uh and again, the menstrual cycle, moon energy connected with the sacral chakra, which is a part of our metaphysical anatomy. And again, uh, the Jaster Nakshatra is connected to the Scorpio energy, which has to deal with genitals. And when we speak of genitals, you know, a quick story for sure. For one, how eyes and vaginas are in essence the same thing. Now you have right here, we're just going to look at the picture. But this is a picture of Indra. And Indra was also known as the Lord of a Thousand Eyes. But before it was eyes, it was actually, quote unquote, vaginas or yonis, you know. And how this happened, basically, Indra was very find of Ahelia, which was the wife of the sage Gu Guatama. And he became very, so getting into it. Basically, uh, so starting off, Indra became obsessive and he started stalking Ahelia, so obsessive energy. And again, as I'm explaining, this is not to make any good or bad out of any, you know, all zodiac archetypes, all different deities have a positive and negative, you know, whether it's uh, considered an auspicious, you know, uh, deity or an inauspicious deity. You know, there's positives and negatives to, you know, both aspects, you know what I'm saying? But. Again, Indra was stalking and being obsessive over uh, the sage Guan, Guan, Guatama <laughs> wife, Ahelia. So that connects with the Scorpio energy, you know, right there. 
you know, and with nakshatras, which I didn't mention, each nakshatra has like a a deity connected to it. And so Indra is the deity connected to the Jaista nakshatra. And the Jaista nakshatra is also connected with, again, it's con connected with Antares. And Antares is like another Mars energy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it deals with the energy of jealousy. It deals with the energy of like war strategy, you know, and again, it connects with the energy of, you know, being obsessive, being jealous, because that's another thing with this story is going to also connect where Indra had a thing where he was jealous of basically jealous of any sages you know any anybody who like meditated you know uh and was obtaining their spiritual you know transformation basically indra had a problem with that you know and what's funny and it's again i'm just going with the flow of it because this will connect straight to the fairy energy in essence, because uh, Apsaras, which I'm going to just bring up my notes real quick so you can kind of, but the Apsaras were basically the dancing ladies of Indra court, but they were also basically celestial nymphs, you know, loosely translated. Uh, again, the one going, the one going in the waters are between the waters of the clouds. You know what I'm saying? So celestial spirits are celestial nymphs within this realm. And also it was a connection where they dwelt amongst the Gandharvas, which is a Hindu class of mythological beings skilled at dance and music, you know? And this, when you think of like, you know, in essence, and again, in, in this moment right now, there are some fairy beings, you know what I'm saying? And some beings that connect with the sexual nature, but they do it in a benevolent way, in a manner where it's actually helping to progress people into, you know, tapping into their energies or into healing sexual trauma, you know. But then there, that energy has also been used negatively, you know what I'm saying, uh, in a manner. First thing I thought of with the dancing ladies of Indra Court was like, you know, uh, video girls back in the day, you know, who were personified to have like this whole like, you know, this prostitute like type of, you know, energy, you know what I'm saying? And. Also, you see it now with some of the female rappers where they promote them to have like this derogatory aspect of the feminine energy. And as you get into, so again, the Hindu fairies was the dancing ladies of Indra's court. Now, some of the famous ones was Urvasi, Manaka, Rimba, and Dilatama. Rimba was known as the queen of the uh, the Apsaras. And Manaka, she's a part of a story where basically, uh, again, she was trying to seduce a sage. She was sent to uh, seduce a certain sage. But basically, they inhabited the, valley, the valleys of mythical mountains. And again, you think of mountains. You know, in the spaces in between mountains, you know what I'm saying? Uh, connecting to the curves of a woman's body, you know what I'm saying? The Taurus feel, you know, being like the breast and the booty. I did a video about pine cone kissing noses and how it's connected to the breast and, you know, the, uh, the booty of women, you know what I'm saying? For lack of a better word, you know what I'm saying? Because I don't mean in a derogatory way. There's no other way to say it, you know, again, because it's straightforward truth and information, you know, <laughs> and we all grown. 
And that's a part of our attraction, though, to, you know, the feminine body, you know, is because it, you know, it embodies certain sacred geometry, you know. But uh, also with some of these fairies, they had the power of injuring a man by shattering his mind by love, you know, also causing mental derangement. And again, the mother of uh, Apsiras, and they have different stories. One perspective of them being born through the churning. So basically through the Samudra, I want to call it the Samudra Mantana, which is the story of the ocean of milk. You know, basically the churning of the ocean of milk in which we're not going to get too deep into that, but we're going to come back to it. But the mother of the Apsiras, and this also connects to a lot of fairy stories, an infant stealing fiend, you know, in which this could be seen, you know, metaphysically, you know, uh, like, and again, depends on who's telling the story. This could be metaphysically from the perspective of looking at, you know, a wound or a vagina is stealing the man's seed, you know what I'm saying? And in some way, form or fashion, you know, or the life force of the man. But that could be coming from, you know, a, a sage who's trying to be super celibate. Because in this stories, you know what I'm saying? Again, Andrew was sending his ladies, his dancing ladies of his court towards sages because he was, you know, uh, basically somewhat jealous or uh, had this energy uh, well also because jayster deals with jealousy but it also deals with competition because you know a war you know is like competition competing you know trying to win over somebody else in essence you know but again infant still in fiend and one of them uh the mother of the aspar apsiris was called muni m-u-n-i you know, the literature that you could find that in is the Bra Brahmanda Purana. And also these nymphs were uh, wearing locks and five braids, you know what I'm saying? That connect to the Venus energy, the Taurus energy, you know, the, the physical body. And basically transforming themselves into aquatic birds. And dwelling near trees, the banyan tree and the fig tree, as me <laughs> speaking on my own, you know, connection with a fig tree. But uh, so yeah, connecting with the trees, and the trees is also another form of stars, you know. So. You got the as the aspirus of Indra, you know, which basically are like, you know, uh, in essence, his way of, you know, trying to distract sages. And we'll get into that. Well, aspirus often sent. So. Aspirers often sent by Andrew himself to disrupt the penance of sages, kings, and princes. Jasta or Antares, you no know, deals with comparison, jealousy, and competition. Andrew always portrayed as being in perpetual fear of losing his throne to highly spiritual and evolved sages. Hence, sending Apsiras, or these, you know, uh, celestial nymphs or fairies to distract devout people and deter them from their spiritual pursuit. Now, also another name in, you know, in Hinduism, Jainism, and I want to say Buddhism is a uh, Yakshas. And yakshas is another class of nature spirits, usually benevolent, but sometimes mischievous or capricious, connected to water, fertility, trees, and the forest. And it's me and my notes, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes using this energy to promote one to connect spiritually, 
you know, because they might have like some of these, uh, you know, some of these queens, you know, tapping in with the sexual energy, but they promoting sexual healing, you know what I'm saying? To heal sexual trauma, to embrace your sexuality in a healthy manner, or, you know what I'm saying? They, uh, you know, they using their, you know, their body as clickbait, you know, in the sense of like, you see this beautiful woman, you know, but then she's promoting vegan food or yoga, you know what I'm saying? And not to say that, oh, yoga and, and vegan food is the only way to be spiritual, but I'm, I'm just giving you different methods of how this energy is channeled in a, you know, benevolent way in a lot of cases. And the Apsaras would get cursed by sages if they... Uh, if they did succeed in distracting the sage, so if the sage found out that, you know what I'm saying, as uh, these Apsaras was trying to distract them, the sages had the power to, to curse the Apsaras and also curse Indra, as we are getting into with the story of the, again, a thousand eyes. And a child born of this connection with the Apsaras and the sage usually would be a female and would be abandoned by both nymph and sage. You know what I'm saying? And this could be seen as, you know, like uh, they, the way they explain it is leaving the child like, you know, like as a foster child. As a matter of fact, Shankuntali, you know, uh, or Shankuntali, you know, is a story of one of these children born of Manaka, Amaneka, I brought up earlier, you know, was one of the popular Apsaras and the Rishi uh, Vishwamitri, uh, v Vishwamitra, you know, uh, but Rishi Vishwamitra was like a sage, you know, visited by Manaka Apsara, you know, and, you know, they end up having a baby, but, you know, not getting into detail, he ended up, you know, cursing her. You know, basically removing itself because she fell in love with him. But, you know, he didn't return that love as like somewhat of a curse. You know, as a matter of fact, as I'm, you know, expressing some of these, again, these mythologies uh, is a is anatomy and is also psychology in the sense of like some of us may have experienced you know, these mythological stories within our life or had little episodes that sound similar to, you know, some of these uh, stories. So, again, you know, Apsaras mainly, you know, uh, mainly originate from the ocean of milk and they're known as the the dancing dancing ladies of Indra's court. So now another aspect which I don't want to get too much into but also you know just a connection when we think about you know pixels on the TV screen you know, which could be seen as like a bunch of like tubes or eyes in essence, but the pixels also like pixies and in essence having sex with your eyes because in essence you're consuming the light of, you know, the pixels that you're looking at when you're looking at a TV screen, you know. And Andrew, again, dealing with pixies or fairies and again, a pixie is a small human-like uh small human-like in form and with pointed ears and a pointed hat you know also somewhat could be like classified as like a gnome in essence and again uh, asperus uh, excuse me it's spelled wrong apsaras it was 26 of them of of them in indra's court and i also came across somebody brought up uh astras and in a video that I did about like fairies or nature elementals being used like Pokemon or dual beasts, because in Yu-Gi-Oh, 
you know, the dual beasts are basically like, you know, elemental spirits, you know what I'm saying? But elemental spirits used to used in duality to duel, you know what I'm saying, with, you know, other people in essence, you know, and this kind of goes into, you know, uh, like you could almost say like battle magic, you know, matter of fact, in the show, the magicians too. And the Astra concept also reminds me of the anime Soul Eater, but the Astra is not necessarily the same as this comparison as I was talking about, like using the elementals as weapons, but it is channeling like deities and elementals to be a weapon. But the Astra was a supernatural weapon presided over by a specific deity and imbued with spiritual and occult powers that cause its effect or impact. You know, and they got a bunch of stories if you research Astra, you know, and matter of fact, no, but I'm not going to go into it because that's a whole different thing. So continuing, talk about Jace the Nakshatra, you know, and again, Indra being competitive and jealous and also, again, con connecting this uh you know, the sexual body part and the spiritual eye. So Scorpio energy deals with the sexual body parts. You know what I'm saying? Whether you're male or uh, female, but in this case, we're talking about the female body part in the sense of the yoni or the vagina. But, you know, that also, again, connects the mythology. You know what I'm saying? This mythological story of, energy, of Indra having a bunch of vaginas over his body, you know what I'm saying, is connected to the Scorpio energy or the Jace the Nakshatra, you know what I'm saying? And when he did get some help, where he actually pleaded to get these vaginas like taken off of him, he ended up getting them turned into eyes. And even with them getting turned into eyes, you know, you think of Scorpio also having a spiritual eye. You know what I'm saying? Scorpio energy is known for being very psychic. Which, I mean, all water signs, you know, uh, and this would also connect very strongly to Pisces because of Vesica Pisces, you know, within its name is literally like an eye or a vagina. You know, it's like both parts, you know, and I think I may have... Uh, that pulled up. Let's see. I don't have it pulled up at the moment. Let's see. I know I got a sacred geometry. Oh, here we go. But you know the Vesica Pisces. You know, and again, Taurus feel looks like breasts, looks like uh the booty, you know what I'm saying? Also the vaginal canal and also an eye at the same time. And you see how that eventually turns into the seed of life and the flower of life, which you can also find the tree of life within it. And again, Andrew with all these little eyes on his body. But basically, he transformed himself. He was spying on Ahelia, uh, the sage's wife. And he he played like a rooster because he knew the sage would wake up in the morning and go, you know, meditate. So he acted like a rooster to get him to leave a little earlier than expected. And then... He seduced Ahelia, and after them having sex, the sage found out, and he cursed both Indra and Ahelia. And in so many words, he cursed Indra by, like, you know, saying, like, hey, since you love vagina so much, you know what I'm saying? Since you love the vesicle Pisces so much, you know what I'm saying? You like the Yoni so much. I'm going to put a bunch of yonis all over your whole body. You know what I'm saying? So, again, 
it became thousand eyes later, but literally it was the thousand yonis all over his body. You know, and again, as somebody who uh, wanted to have sex, you know, from the masculine perspective, you know, this was like a curse for him. And he ended up pleading to Brahmin and I want to say Brahmin and Shiva to, you know, basically help him out. And so they helped him out by, you know, because they because also they the sages have very strong power. And this could also speak to the energy of, you know, uh, the humans, you know, not realizing it. But on the human experience, a human has just as much power as, you know, the quote unquote gods, in essence, you know, our goddess, you know, but you see that again, that connection within the anatomy, within the mythology. And again, it's connecting to the fairy energy. But basically, uh, an injure, you know, was known as basically, let's see if I got it right here. Indra was known as the Asura Slayer, and Asuras was another name for the quote unquote demons, you know. But basically, though, again, whether auspicious or inauspicious, so say, for instance, Indra was considered auspicious, but he still kind of had like a, a division causing type of perspective. So, although he was considered auspicious, he was still, in essence, like causing division, you know, in some way, form or fashion. You know what I'm saying? So to some extent, you know, uh, considered auspicious, but, you know, still, in essence, like causing more duality. And speaking of auspicious, you know, you look at the word auspice, you know, and it goes to divine or uh, well, auspicious connects to a divine or pro prophetic token, but you break down uh, auspicious into auspice, and then in Latin, auspicium or auspex, which connects to the observer of birds, you know. And when we talk about birds and, you know, the apsaras, you know, that's also connected to, you know, uh, again, the fairy energy, but. Again, you see Latin avis, bird, Latin sp specier, or specier, but I'm pretty sure specier, to look, bird, to look at bird, and then avi, short for avatar, you know, because these gods, you know, with this Vishnu having many avatars, and you can see Vishnu is another form of uh, Toth. You know, shape shifting through time, you know what I'm saying? Or Mercury shape shifting, you know, having all these different avatars. But also, again, all spice omens through observation of birds. And again, the nakshatras, connection to lunar cycles, 27 nakshatras. And this is a clue that is connected with reincarnation process and gods and goddesses trying to control and rule over humanity. Again, mythology is anatomy by law. You know, uh, these different, you know, uh, zodiac archetypes is also part of our body. And they're also like, you know, again, these gods and goddesses rule over certain organs and, you know, uh, certain things in our body, you know, and you could either let it rule you or, you know, have harmony, you know, with these gods and goddesses in connection with your body. But, you know, because again, like if, if not in harmony with these gods and goddesses or if you're putting yourself under rulership of the, you know, if you let your body rule you, you know, because again, what I realized was very interesting is Hinduism, you know, uh, kind of deal with Brahman creating the universe. So in Hinduism, 
in in connection or into in comparison to uh jainism jainism sees the universe as eternal and having no creator and that's the true essence of the no thing the no thing and being eternal doesn't have any creator you know what i'm saying like again it cannot be created nor destroyed it's eternal you know but when you look at hinduism hinduism is somewhat kind of like biblical texts are, you know, the Abrahamic, Abraham, Brahman, that's all the same thing. But, uh, you know, that's the physical reincarnation, no coincidence that Brahman is connected to, when we talk about nakshatras, he's connected to the nakshatra Rohini, and Rohini is connected to uh, basically the Taurus energy. And, you know, the Taurus is the Brahma bull. And, and matter of fact, more so, too, connected to Aldebaran. You know, and speaking of eyes, the bull's eye could also be seen as the bull's vagina because the eastern star of Aldebaran is also like where the sun rises or is born from, in essence. So, you know, you kind of see that anatomy and mythology in that uh, astrological perspective. But... As I was saying right here, you know, nakshatras and the whole aspect, again, of in Hinduism, they consider Brahman as the creator of the universe. But again, like the universe is eternal, like, you know, like there's an essence that goes beyond, you know, the physical body or physical universe. So for Hinduism to say Brahman created everything, they more so talking about creating like the physical nature of the universe. And when you really look at, you know, the Vedic texts and look at Brahman, Brahman is basically the same as Yadala brought from Gnostic scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Because it talks about Brahman creating out of, you know, creating beings, with ignorance at first, you know, and that's kind of like uh, Yadala brought, you know, uh, creating Sabbath and, you know, basically creating beings out of his ignorance and anger. You know, Brahman has the same storyline, you know what I'm saying? And you could also say Brahman connected to uh, certain stories of Anu, you know, as far as I knew and other I can't think of other uh, mythologies, but basically like having, you know, wanting to have sex or going into one of his daughters, in essence, or his first daughter, you know. And. Uh, you kind of see that 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 whole energy again of why these psychological again, these certain traumas we're working through is also on a, you know, from a, a level that's, you know, goes beyond just our human, uh, human perspectives. But again, nakshatras is a clue that is connected with, basically connected with the moon and the lunar cycles. And the moon is, you know, strongly connected with the reincarnation process and gods and goddesses trying to control or rule over humanity, you know. And you could also reference Greek mythology where Zeus basically puts deities, you know, in the sky as planets, stars or constellations. Like you notice at the end of most little stories after some type of dispute, Zeus showed them honor by making them a star in the sky. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and when you look at Roman mythology, some guys are just straight up named after planets. You know what I'm saying? And again, even in Hinduism, same thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, some of these gods and goddesses, you know, are actual planets. But. And this also, again, goes into. You know, again, Brahman and Lakshmi, Abrahamic religion, you know, and again, Rohini connected to Chandra or the moon, you know, because the Aldebaran energy, you know, the, the bull energy connected with the Milky Way, 
the Brahmin bull or also the great mother energy. And that also goes back to the story of churning the milk, you know, in the uh, Vedic text, you know. But the royal star or royal watcher of the East is Aldebaran. And, you know, when we talk about the watchers that go into the Book of Enoch. So, again, the archons basically are the archangels of the constellation or the elliptical. Gods and goddesses are planets. And you look at Roman and Greek mythology. You know, astrology is literally studying how the gods and goddesses move. You know what I'm saying? And I did a video on a, it was called the Wardens of the Matrix or something of that nature. But it's basically like knowing who's on the watch. You know what I'm saying? Like knowing, again, in the explanation from the perspective of looking at Earth, again, not trying to look at it from a negative perspective of like, oh, you know, like, oh, sad, like I'm in jail from that perspective. But, you know, being truthful and understanding like, all right, I'm an infinite being in this uh, this body suit, you know, it's somewhat like, again, like a, a, a light prism or prison encasing, you know, the soul in essence, you know, but basically, uh, again, knowing who's on watch, you know what I'm saying? Who's, who's the warden at the moment, you know what I'm saying? Or what planets are, you know what I'm saying? In the sky and very effective at the moment, and depending on what stars or who's watching, you know what I'm saying? You could get away with certain things, you know, Jupiter, Jupiter, you could get away with certain lucky things and expanding certain things while when Saturn on watch, you know, Saturn kind of more strict and you got to learn the strict lessons and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? And again, this is ex internal aspects projected outwardly, you know, and again, watch uh, the watchers, the four fixed royal stars. And in the book of Enoch, you know, they get into, you know, the watchers, you know what I'm saying? Again, the archangels. So it's again showing you, you know, in astrology, again, all these different aspects are in your body. No, speaking of that, I just did the, just posted about this, uh, this book with mudras and basically, you know, right here it speaks on in astrology, uh, links between the brain and hands are supported by the planet Mercury. It is well known that already in the newborn, the movements of extremities are boosting cerebral activities. A person with mental disorder displays definite irregularities in the behavior of the hands controlled by Mercury. And again, because Mercury is the messenger, so the messages from the brain to the fingers, you know what I'm saying? Like that's a message, you know what I'm saying? A quote unquote brain synapsis you know, our cognition, you know, that's all connected. And even again, you get down to, let's see, I don't want to pass it up. I know I marked it somewhere down here. Oh, well, you got this too. This little diagram showing how the body parts connect with the hand. Oh no, I highlighted. The phalanx of each phalanxes of each finger mean the division of elements into the trigons of elements of nature. The index finger, fire, which is the ram, lion, and archer, you know, as Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Middle finger, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. The ring finger, Gemini, uh, Libra, and Aquarius. 
the little finger, Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces, you know what I'm saying? But again, the zodiac signs within the fingers, you know, so mythology and anatomy. And this also ties in earlier when I was talking about the vesica Pisces, let's see. Well, this somewhat gets into it. You know, but basically, I was talking about how three, three is the the breast that feeds one and two. You know, and that's also kind of again the vesicle Pisces, and you see the breast. You know, one and two. And again, like showing how the number three. And the Mercury energy is the messenger energy and kind of connects with homorphodite beings, you know what I'm saying? And uh, let's see. Oh, wait. oh and the goddess Manakshi which is also from Hindu. And it was a goddess known to have three breasts, you know, and connected to the goddess, was basically known as the goddess with fish eyes, you know, and three breasts, you know what I'm saying? Again, like that's basically like the three circles, you know, shown like with the vesica Pisces. But the Hindu goddess and uh, deity of Madure, who is considered an avatar of the goddess Pravati. But again, Manakshi is a Sanskrit mina, meaning fish, akshi, meaning eye, so fish eye. Oh, that's all connected. And let me see. Again, that's just more. Body parts. Again, bringing it back to Jaysta Nakshatra. Mythology is anatomy. And also a connection with Jaysta. Jaysta is also like besides being a nakshatra is connected to basically is the eldest sister of Lakshmi. And Lakshmi is somewhat basically like the energy of Lakshmi is like the energy of Oshun in so many ways, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with, you know, fortune, abundance, you know, kind of like the sensual nature of things, you know, and again, no coincidence that Brahmin is Lakshmi's consort and Brahmin is connected with the bull again, you know what I'm saying? So in the bull, when you think about the land of milk and honey, you know, and Oshun deals with honey, Lakshmi connected to, you know, the honey energy and, you know, connected to the Brahmin bull, a uh, Brahma bull, but Brahmin bull, you know. And uh, again, Jaysta, known as the eldest or the elder, which she's the goddess of adversity and misfortune. She's like the opposite. So Lakshmi is the goddess of fortune. Jaysta is the goddess of misfortune, you know, also known as Mudiva, 
And just fans talking about get moved, the car goes move, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't make it up. <laughs> Connection with, you know, again, the opposite of Lakshmi, but still connecting with the cow energy in some way. And again, some of her symbols are holding a broom. She's also connected to the red, the talaka, which is the red dot, you know, put on the forehead. Also depicted as a crow, sometimes riding on a donkey, you know what I'm saying? Talk about set. You know, from Egyptian mythology, seen riding on the ass. But really, that was connected to uh, the story of Jesus, you know, quote unquote, the Christ energy or the sun energy riding uh, an ass into town or, you know, a donkey. But that's also kind of like the lower nature. But also was another uh, connection to the set energy. But she also uh, rides with a chariot drawn by lions and tigers. And another key was a uh, Jaster wasn't able to bear the sight or sound of auspicious things, you know, but basically like anything that was kind of in essence considered divine and the de definition of auspicious, like, you know, divine, spiritual type of things, you know, she couldn't deal with it. And that's also even though Andrew was considered auspicious, he still was like. And, and again, it's how you see like all these different trickster aspects and, you know, certain beings considered auspicious, but was doing some inauspicious things just as much, too. And again, like I spoke on earlier, Indra, you know, representing division, although he's considered auspicious, he represents competition, you know, jealousy, you know, uh but yeah, just speaking on those two, you know, and again, connecting to Indra and the Nakshatra. And she's again, dwelling in inauspicious areas. She dwells in houses with quarrels. So, you know, again, in that Antares, you know, the, the star Antares and Scorpio connected to the Mars energy, connected to battles, quarrels, warring, you know, disputes, you know, uh, and also connected to liars who have harsh language or har liars who use harsh language, harsh language, I'm sorry. And again, she deal, she uh, dwells where evil, quote unquote, evil and sinful men live and dwell in areas where elders eat food, disregarding the hunger of the youth, you know. So you see how that nakshatra, you know, jasta connects, you know, the goddess jasta, the nakshatra jasta connecting with, you know, the constellation of Scorpio and connecting with Indra and connecting with Indra in his thousand vaginas and his thousand spiritual eyes, you know what I'm saying, being able to see. You know, and again, connecting to the Vesica Pisces, sacred geometry, which is also, again, with Indra connecting to the fairies, you know, and the fairies. I just did a connecting the dots video where the fairies kind of dress, kind of, you know, I made the example of Tinkerbell and different fairies kind of have like this seductive look to them. You know what I'm saying? Again, no good or bad, no right or wrong. You know, but literally because nature, nature is like nature. It is the, I don't know if I have that picture, but you know, uh, is the, the, uh, like again, the sexual area of the body. Hence why, again, like being from, you know, Louisiana, I don't know if they use that everywhere else, but like the old schools or the old heads, what we may call them. They would use the terminology like, oh, man, I got to get my nature right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but basically as a man, they meant like, you know, uh, being erect to have sex. You know what I'm saying? Like, man, my something was wrong with my nature or something. Or I got my nature right, you know, but, you know, it's connected with that sexual energy, you know. So in, in so many ways, you know, fairies are connected to, you know, again, nature, but. And I say, but it's from the perspective of, again, that that body part, our nature.
but before I add anything else, we're just gonna leave it with the connections with Indra. You know, Indra the Apsaras, which are the Hindu versions of fairies. You know, and again, the whole connection. You know, again, the Aspiras recap. Dancing ladies of Indra's court. You know, and basically it was like his little, his little, uh, you know, so in, in, a, in a hood terminology, like his little murder mommies, you know what I'm saying? But basically they, uh, oh, and I didn't speak on this part. But again, they were sent to disrupt the meditations of sages for Indra because Indra didn't want, you know, any sages to pass in his power, you know, due to his, you know, his uh, comp competitive slash jealous, you know, type of energy. So, you know, he sent the Apsiras and again, you have this, the story of Uh, Shankuntali, which was the the child born of Manaka, or Maneka, one of the uh, Apsaras being sent to disrupt Rishi Vishwamitra's, you know, spiritual growth. You know, and he ended up cursing again her. But in this other story, uh, again, the sage ended up cursing not only... Uh, but really, it was Indra who was doing, he didn't send one of the Apsaras. He went go do this work himself, you know, basically. Uh, but more so just being obsessive about a sage wife, you know, being obsessed with a sage wife, having sex with her. And, you know, the sage ended up cursing him. But the sage also is like the sage get everybody involved. Like I'm cursing the God involved. In, in uh the fairy involved or in in the case of uh again the sage with Indra, he cursed his wife you know as well it's also one more aspect that i didn't apsara's nymphs some sages would spy on these nymphs you know, so, hey, change of, the change of story. Some of these sages, you know what I'm saying, would spy on these nymphs. You know, and I think of modern day porn, you know what I'm saying? If you pay attention, you know, uh, or should I say we should be speaking in the past tense. If you paid attention, you know what I'm saying, to some, uh, you know, some women in porn or even softcore porn on social media, you know, pay attention to certain tats and symbols and things. In the background, I think of, you know, uh, think of one sis that, you know, got dragonfly tattoos, you know, and we'll get into that because that's also a connection too with the voodoo and voodoo, you know, and again, it could either be used as something, you know, helpful or harmful. You know what I'm saying? So it's not deeming it all good or all bad. But again, some of these beings are helping to heal sexual trauma and maintain balance of lower chakras and higher chakras, you know, with this sexual energy. But then some are, you know what I'm saying, just kind of being, you know, distractions. But again, the say some of the sages would spy on the nymphs. And matter of fact, and ejaculate spontaneously, and from this fluid or sea man, they would spring up mostly male children, you know. And I think of like, you know, uh, which Yadala brought in essence considered a aborted fetus, but Yadala brought also considered like a sperm because he got the head of a lion and the tail of a serpent, and the sperm kind of has like that wide head like it's a you know a head with a lion's mane and a little tail like a snake you know what i'm saying so connected with the semen 
you know, solar phallic energy, Leo energy, still so lion headed serpent with that connection as well. You know, Leo or the sun energy connecting with the child energy, hence why in the tarot cards, the little child riding on a white horse on the sun card, you know, that's all connected. But Absara is able to change their shape at will and govern the fortunes of gambling and gaming. You know what I'm saying? So again, that's also some of the little, you know, uh, mischievous aspects somewhat, you know, is the gambling and playing games part. <laughs> and again, the literature, Bharata's Nat Natya Shastra is basically uh, the most comprehensive trees on the origin of Narithya, which is dance and Natya, drama vital role of theater and dance and when we talk about theater you know that's in essence uh the osiris energy connected to pata or pata pan you know peter pan who had who with him tinkerbell you know tinkerbell was a fairy you know what i'm saying that's also connected to the pan energy with the trees you know as well or you know pan the the goat body goat human in nature, you know what I'm saying? And again, you know, being somebody connected to the Capricorn uh, archetype, you know what I'm saying? Again, it's positive and negative to all these different archetypes, you know, but again, it's to know you're the no thing on the human experience and not to let these archetypical energies, you know, uh, Basically, you know, not to worship them and not allow for it to control you, but for you to operate in harmony, you know, with the polarities of your being, you know what I'm saying? Again, to create that integrity, a.k.a. harmony, because integrity is not oneness in the sense of everything acting exactly the like. Integrity is getting each unique perspective to align in harmony where they still be their unique unique selves but they move in harmony you know to make the one body whole you know again the, the stomach does what it uniquely does the heart does what it uniquely does but they operate in harmony to have a balance and a wholeness you know what i'm saying for the whole being but again uh the most comprehensive treaties on the origin of Narithya dance and not their drama, vital role of theater and dance. Again, Osiris, Pata, that's also, that's what I was going to say. Uh, you know, talk about the Oscars, you know, the, the little trophy, the little man as the trophy for the Oscars is like the same as Pata, you know, connected to Osiris in the underworld. You know, we talk about theater. You know, you go to the movies, it's made to be exactly like your subconscious mind where, you know, basically a theater is almost like you dreaming. You know, you're in a dark room and all you have is this picture, you know what I'm saying, in front of you, kind of like when you close your eyes to go to sleep and you start visualizing or dreaming or, you know, in your subconscious, you know, aka, in essence, the underworld, you know. And it's also, again, just mentioning the uh, queen of the Apsaras, Ramba. And also, Hanuman's mother was an Apsara named An uh, Ajana or Punji Kastali. So even Hanuman, the half monkey, you know, uh, God, you know. And what it says, curse from the sage Dervasa. Again, another sage cursing Apsara. You know, caused her to be born on earth as a Vanara princess, married to Kasara Vanara, uh, the Vanara chief. And the Vanaras were basically monkey, ape, a monkey slash ape or race of forest dwelling people. You know, Vana forest belonging to the forest, Nara man, forest man, you know, a forest beings, you know what I'm saying? Because, of course, they had women, too, but, you know. At a certain point. <laughs> but, you know, again, so even Hanuman, uh, mother, was a Apsara as well. 
And again, the Ramayana speaks of Hanuman shape shifting into a cat. So he also Hanuman had the Apsara shape shifting abilities as well. Because again, this nymph energy, in essence, you know, it's from the 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 air and uh, the air and water. And again, let me see where I have that. on that Apsara celestial nymphs loosely translating to the one going in the waters because the water energy is the shape shifting energy and also the ability to you know uh, clone in so many ways and are between the waters of the clouds you know and that's kind of like our air because our air has some form of water in it as well it's just not as thick as the ocean water you know what I'm saying but that's all interconnected. And, you know, holistically, again, this video was to just draw connections to get more of an understanding of yourself, you know, and see how these energies resonate inside you and outside you, you know, so you could tap into these energies in a healthy manner or in a truthful manner. You know, but, you know, for me, I align with the, the energy of bringing forth, you know, balance to the realm, you know, in which just tipping the scale of leaning a little bit towards, you know, uplifting the divine.